Hello athletes and fans of bodybuilding, Terry Kelgindi with the Mr. Olympia. This episode, we're going to talk about the ones to watch. Maybe they didn't win the show, maybe they didn't place where they wanted to place, but we should be watching their progress because they have a lot of promise. With the exception of one competitor, Hadi Schupan. He is the 2022 Mr. Olympia. And from now on, we're gonna be paying attention, scrutinizing, what he does for the sport of bodybuilding. He carries that flag and his job is to convince more and more people to join the bodybuilding world. Some bodybuilders are great representatives, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jay Cutler, and some bodybuilders are not great representatives. That's the reality of the sport. Hadi Schupan has a job which is extremely hard, which is to bring people to the new world of bodybuilding and he symbolizes someone that comes from a country where the relations with the United States are not very positive. Hadi Schupan might not speak English, but he carries the hope for millions and millions of athletes that they can do it. If he can do it, they can do it. From India, Iran, Brazil, South Africa, Norway, they can all do it because Hadi Schupan has done it. Congratulations, you carried the flag and we're hoping you do a great job. Let's move on to the bodybuilders. Yes, Andrew Jack. A lot of people had high expectations. He's going to place top two, top three. He won his first two pro shows. The reality is this was his first Mr. Olympia and he is a genetic freak. If you place him between Hadi Schupan and Derek Lunsford, he's going to look exquisite. He's going to look great. He could be a little bit more conditioned and maybe his back needs a little bit more density, but if that comes, Andrew Jack is here to make an impact and he's going to make some noise on that lineup. Mark my words. Another guy is Rafael Brindon. Yes, it was his first Mr. Olympia. Everybody was talking about, you need to get bigger, you need to get massive. Well, he did get bigger. His back is vastly improved. But you have to pay attention that he beat some real big guys, such as Ian Valier and Michael Criso. Rafael Brindon is one of those guys that we're going to be watching for years to come. Congratulations to both of them. I have high hopes for both of them to make a move in the next Mr. Olympia. On the 212, Keon Pearson. Yes, I was impressed with him. And I think Keon Pearson has the ability to follow the footsteps of Hadi Schupan, Derek Lunsford, and William Bonek, and eventually move up to the open. He has the same qualities as Derek Lunsford, large clavicle bones with a small waist. And if he continues to gain size and control the waist, I believe he eventually can move up to the open and make an impact. He is that good. Watch out for Keon Pearson. In the classic physique, I like Urs Kalachinski. While it's no surprise, everybody loves this German miracle bear. I'm going to tell you that he is one of the few guys on that first call out that can put a lot of weight on that frame and get better. And as Seabum once said on one of the Olympia lives, I think he's the one with the most potential. Urs Kalachinski can make a move and surprise the world. Another guy that I really liked on the classic physique was a Korean competitor. His name is Jae-hoon Park. He placed 12th, but I don't care. I think he's phenomenal. His conditioning, his posing, everything was on point. He can gain a little bit more mass and he can pose to make the waist a little bit smaller, but he caught my eye. And I think this guy is also gonna move up very quickly. Now, moving on to the men's physique, Charjo Grant. Where did he come from? He looks like a statue. He has front and back, and I think this guy is going to make an impact. You don't move into that top five in the men's physique if you're not phenomenal, and he is just that, phenomenal. Another guy that moved into the top five was Edivan Palmeira from Brazil. He was the first guy to turn pro in Brazil in 2018. 
and a lot of people had hopes earlier in his career. It just took a little bit longer, but this guy can be the next Diogo Montenegro, the next Felipe Franco, the next Kaique. He has the ability to make an impact, and on his first Olympia, he's in the top five. Congratulations. In the wheelchair division, Jean-Pierre. That guy is good, his conditioning was good. And what impressed me the most was his back double biceps. He had tons of muscle there, and I think on that shot, he actually placed second just behind Harold. I think this guy is going to be good for many years to come. Now, moving on to the ladies, women's bodybuilding, Angela Yo. Yes, her conditioning was impeccable. She posed well, and I think if she controls the abdominal section and makes the waist smaller, she's gonna start getting closer to Andrea Shaw. She made an impact. Nobody can ignore Angela anymore. She's here to stay, and I don't care how many years she's gonna be on the Olympia stage, the first time she stepped on the Olympia stage, she made an impact that no one will ever forget. Now, moving on to the women's physique. I'm still a huge fan of hers, Ashley Jones. I think she's a genetic freak. She has small waist, large clavicle bones. The flaring quads are beautiful. And I think if she works on the conditioning, she's gonna continue to move up and be better and better. I think she will be great. And despite the placing, she is one of the ones to watch. Now, in the figure category, Jessica Padilla. Ah, oh, what can you say about her? She won all these shows in 2022. She went to the Olympia and she looked even better. I believe that after a few years, the one that really put a challenge on Sydney Gillen was Jessica Padilla. And if she continues to get better and Sydney makes one mistake, then Jessica could become the Olympia champion in the figure division. That's how good she is. Now, obviously, Sydney is very experienced, but what Jessica did in 2022 was impressive. She won shows, and then she looked even better at the Olympia. Congratulations. I wanna move on to the fitness, Jacqueline Baker. Wow, her presentation, her routine was incredible. It was emotional. It was almost a piece of art. She dedicated that and she did so well that people were crying in the audience. Afterwards, she came backstage and told me and the star of Primetime Muscle, Chris Cormier, you guys better start talking about me on that show. And yes, girl, we're gonna be talking about you the entire year because you are that good. Moving on to the bikini, Amy Lynn Velasquez. Yes, she's a phenomenal competitor, former Miss USA's. She gained a little bit of muscle on her frame and she is formidable. I believe she should contain a little bit of the muscularity on top, but Jamie Lynn is here to stay and she should move up very quickly. Another one that impressed me and she looked like a statue on stage, incredible back pose, Phoebe Hagen. Now Phoebe was not on the first call out, but she moved up, moved up, and moved up based on the callings. She never gave up. So posing, resilience, and determination on the bodybuilding stage got her to move up. I'm very impressed with her, and I think she's going to be great. In the wellness category, Hyeni Fogal from Brazil. In terms of structure, she's the closest thing to Franciele Matos. Yes, if you look at that top five, from the back, she looks like her sister. And I think Hyeni Fogal, if she improves her posing, she can actually move up real quick and get close to Franciele Matos. She's the one to watch in the wellness division. I want you to subscribe to Olympia TV. We were the only ones backstage at the Mr. Olympia. We are getting close to 100,000 subscribers on a pace no one has ever seen on YouTube. And I want you to become part of the family. Subscribe right now, otherwise your life is going to be miserable. My name is Tarek Elgindi, 2023, here we come.